Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wadier. And I'm Tommy Welling, and you're listening to the Fasting for Life podcast. This podcast is about using fasting as a tool to regain your health, achieve ultimate wellness, and live the life you truly deserve. Each episode is a short conversation on a single topic with immediate actionable steps. We cover everything from fat loss and health and wellness to the science of lifestyle design. We started Fasting for Life because of how fasting has transformed our lives, and we hope to share the tools that we have learned along the way. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Fasting for Life podcast. My name is Dr. Scott Wadier. I'm here, as always, with my good friend and colleague, Tommy Welling. Good evening, sir. Hey, Scott. How's it going? Good, man. Excited about tonight's episode. Uh, We're going to be diving into one of the things that we both feel uh, kind of distinguishes us and sets the fasting for life method apart from a lot of the other methods out there. And, um, you know, go over three distinct situations that we get a lot of questions about um, and things that we run into and, you know, putting together these plans for people. And, um, you know, looking at the three situations, there's a lot of similarities, um, but there's also some differences. And we want to make sure that we're going to be focusing on you know, the actionable things you can do, but most importantly, getting the results that you've been trying to get for the long term, right? So the things that you've been struggling with. Yeah, everybody has different wrenches that get thrown in day to day. You know, everybody's 24 hours a day looks different. And, you know, week to week, it can look different as well. Um, But there's some patterns that come up. And there are some tools that we've developed, and some methods to work around those and we're, we've, we've found a lot of common ground, um, you know, working with so many people and we've decided to, you know, kind of systematize that. And we want to go into a few of those details tonight um, to help you guys, you know, get some tools so you can start adapting to what life's going to inevitably throw at you and still make your way to the finish line. I think one of the big things that we're kind of uncovering here is that, you know, coming from someone who's done everything under the sun in terms of different types of diets, and I'm doing air quotes because it's an audio medium and y'all can't see that, but um, it's, it's it, in trying and doing all the metabolic testing and the weight loss and the working out and the macros and the calorie counting, and the restriction and you name it, right? Um, one of the mm-hmm. things that was missing was that, you know, the, the plan became the center of my life and the center of most people's lives where like it's, this is what you have to do every single day, regardless of what else is going on. And yeah. I just think there's a better way um, because that's not real life. If, if you have kids, you understand that uh, you, you don't win the days or the weeks or the months. You win the moments, I think, as some wise person with a beard told me once. Um, <laughs> and uh, he might be, uh, you know, by the name of Tommy. But, um, you know, we want to win the moments, right? So like having a toddler is crazy. Like one minute, everything's fine. And then the bubble bursts from the bubble machine and there's crying. And you're like, wait, what just just happened? That's the point of the bubble. Like you want it to pop them, right? So that that constant change and variability of day-to-day life is really what reality is. Yeah, it is. And it's so easy to get derailed, especially when you have longer term goals that you're going for. You know, forget about if you have two or four weeks um, worth of goals ahead of you. But, you know, what if you have two months or what if you have a year um, to get to where you really want to be or you're reversing just years of metabolic disease or you're really trying to get your health under control or maybe there's cancer in your family and you really want to hone in on autophagy on on a regular basis. Um, You know, these are things that are going to take time and practice um, to get to and and life's going to going to throw you some curveballs along the way. So having some tools ready at your disposal to deal with them is just vital to the process. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think the word that we should use to categorize it is something that we've kind of honed in on, you know, over the last few months and things that we didn't realize we were doing, but, you know, as we put together the um, fasting for life experience, the 28 day experience that we're going to be doing, um, it it really kind of showed us that like, the key is in the details, right? So it's not just, and I've done this before, here's your, your workbook, right? Here's your daily journal. Here's your weigh-in schedule. Here's your, um, you know, foods to eat. Here's your recipe plan. Here's your supplements. Here's your shakes, 
like all of these different weight loss programs that are out there. Um, and we're not going to name any, but there's hundreds of them, right? Go to the, go to the aisle in a bookstore. Yes, they are still alive and well, go to a Barnes and Noble and go to the health and wellness or lifestyle, right? Diet and lifestyle, um, section. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the biggest sections in, in the bookstore, right? Cause there's so many different fasts and diets and, you know, the South beach. And oh, I said, I wasn't going to name any and Atkins. Oh, I did it again. Um, but like they all just are like put everybody in the same category and everybody is different when it comes to their metabolic profile. Um, meaning the health of your system, right? The, the, the health yeah. of the body that you're working with and everybody's day to day is different, right? So the customization right. is really what we're finding to be key. Yeah, as, as well as uh, what about psychological baggage? You know, what kind of upbringing did you have? What kind of habits did you, <laughs> what kind of habits did you develop or were, were your family, um, you know, used to doing, um, you know, as far as eating goes and eating rituals and things like that. And some people very dessert heavy, um, other people, you know, just, you know, savory foods that, that they wish they could kind of get away from, develop cravings over the years everybody's day-to-day -day is different. So taking all those things into account is, is part of what we do when we customize a plan. I mean, I grew up in a household, an Irish, uh, French, Irish, French, Canadian, Irish, Catholic household, right? So we're talking about <clears throat> um, some interesting food, right? You get your corned beef and cabbage, but you've got, you know, your, your typical, like you have, you have bread and salad or carb and salad or like, you know, pasta casserole dishes and, mm -hmm. you know, just, just heavy on, heavy on the bread and carbs and multiple servings. And then there was always ice cream in the freezer and there was soda, you know, um, lined up along the fridge, different flavors and textures and colors and you name it. Right. So it's like, yeah, yeah we have these, we have these familial things. We have these social things. Um, you know, sports for one was big for me in my life where like we'd get together and we'd watch college football on Saturdays and get wings and, you know, have some, some beers on Sundays. And like you, you get into these routines, right. Um, which as the years go by, you don't realize are just the habits, right. That, that you form. And that's yeah. the hardest thing when you kind of move out of those phases or you continue in those phases, like you need to be able to work around the things that you love to do or the things that are ingrained into your family or your part, you know, some of the things that are ingrained into your life. And I'm not yeah. saying eat wings and drink beer every day. Of course. I mean, I'd but you know, yeah. <laughs> but if you find yourself in a situation where you've been doing that for a year or five or 25, and then now all of a sudden you realize you want to reverse that you're going to need a powerful method to reverse that. Otherwise you're not going to get very far, very fast. Yeah. You're going to get the yo-yo effect, right? Yeah. So the three things that we're going to talk about tonight in terms of customization um, is really going to be t speaking to the mastery of this for the long term, but also a little bit about the method, right? So mm -hmm. you've got your mindset, you've got your motivation, why you want to lose weight. It can't, you can't be just to lose weight. As we always say, it has to be anchored to something greater than that. Uh, long-term health, not ending up in the same, you know, health profile as your parents, you know, you want to, you know, be able to play with the grant, whatever it is, you need to have that mindset and motivation. But really, when you get to the method of the mastery, the, the, the mastery of this is learning how to adapt and interpret your body's signals over time. And that comes through staying consistent with the method, which is where the customization comes into play. So the three situations I'm going to talk about tonight are going to be vacations, right? So if you're going on a cruise, you're going on a 10 day vacation, you know, this is something that a lot of people look forward to throughout the year. Um, you know, how to navigate that. And then we're going to talk about uh, the business traveler, right? Someone that might be gone three to four times, uh, three to four days a week. Uh, maybe you travel a few times a month for work. You yeah. know, things are a little different right now, but um, you know, this will be once again applicable. Um, and then the working from home professional mom, dad, whatever it is, um, the person that is in the home environment, because I did hear this from from someone that I, a client that I saw uh, last week. He's like, man, I've been home and I'm cooking for the family and it's hard. I'm like, no, no, see, for me, it's not hard. I enjoy that more than if I'm by myself. If I'm cooking for the family. I know eyes are on me and I'm like, nope, not going to do it. <laughs> I can stay strong, right? So we'll we'll get yeah. into a little bit of that too, though. So let's start with the vacation. 
Okay. So, God. So, you know, we, we talk vacation. Um, it's not just about the vacation. You have to put some thought into it before you actually leave for the trip. I, it, it all starts, depending on what your goals are, um, it may start a few days before or it, it might start a month before. There might be an ability to get to your goal and even get a little bit past that so that you can, you know, enjoy your goal, be there, have your vacation, enjoy it, and have overshot a little bit to where when you come back, you're, you're still exactly where you want it to be um, before you left. See, vacation for me falls into one of those categories of vacations, birthdays, holidays, cookouts, sporting events, like one of those life events, right? Weddings, parties, you know, social gatherings, like it, it falls into one of those where like, I'm on a great plan. And then these things can tend to pop up and like mess up my plan. Right. So it's the, yeah. you know what, I'll start my new plan after X, Y, and Z. Right. So I'll start after the vacation. Well, how about we actually go on vacation and have the confidence to walk around in a bathing suit? Like, yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. I mean, dude, you're talking to the guy who like would restrict, restrict, restrict. I'd get on the rower and row for an hour to an hour and a half a day for like 60 days leading up to a vacation just to mm-hmm. lose that 10 to 12, maybe 15 pounds. Right. And now with my metabolic profile and a little bit of insulin resistance, insulin resistance that I didn't know I had, I'd go on vacation and I would, I would, indulge, but I wouldn't go crazy. I wouldn't be at the all you can eat buffet 24 seven on the cruise ship, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I'd eat, have some drinks, enjoy. And then I'd come back and I would, it would take me six months to lose it again. Right. Yeah. So these for me fall into the category of those things that like, you can't ever seem to get ahead of. Yeah, I did the same thing. Um, I was invited to officiate for some really good friends of ours in Hawaii. So I, I remember just doing hours and hours of endless cardio um, to drop down to, um, you know, somewhere low 200s. Um, I, I think I dropped 15 to 20 pounds. It took me months and months and months to do it. And then I remember being there and then we went on a, a food tour, which was awesome, just touring all the different kinds of amazing foods and the cultural crossroads of the world over there. And just sleeping for what seemed like 16 hours straight because the insulin just hit me so hard. But um, like you said, just taking months and months to to get back to that point. I don't even know if if I really did get back to that point, that pre-vacation point um, after I came back. And there'll be some people out there in the f- fitness and, and weight loss world that'll be like, well, you're just not doing it right. I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. Like making the plan your life is possible, right? Like the mm-hmm. long-term slow grind of calorie restriction and move more can get you there short-term. But if you have any of the underlying metabolic issues, right, it's not going to get you there. So how can we in like one or two things make vacation successful? First of all, what's your goal? Um, you know, if you want to get some weight off the midsection before you go, then you probably want to start you know, 60, 30, 60, maybe 90 days out if you know the vacation's coming. So you don't have to, um, you know, completely, you know, go crazy. But the the powerful thing with fasting is you can achieve in a week with doing one meal a day, what you can usually achieve in like three to four weeks of a slight calorie restriction and high increased exercise or movement. So um, 30, 60 days out, you know, you want to lose 15, 20, totally obtainable with fasting. Um, so that's one thing you can do in terms of an actionable step um, to really, you know, be prepared for the vacation. You know, it's coming. You don't plan a vacation two days ago and then hop on a plane and go, right? You know, it's on the calendar. <laughs> right. So um, really look at that first step in the plan and tell me, how would you customize it, um, you know, for yourself if you were going on vacay and you want to lose that 15, 20 or maybe you know, maybe, maybe another point that would, that would allow people to have success. Yeah. I mean, what, what's really worked well for me is thinking about the momentum. So if I get the momentum started before I ever leave, that's huge for me because if, if I take, um, let's just say three days beforehand. So, um, you know, if you have some bigger goals you want to hit, take it out a few weeks, um, or a month or two, that's great. Um, but if you just want to get the momentum started or you, you uh, planned a vacation, you know, kind of off the cuff, um, try a 72-hour fast. You'll be completely glycogen depleted. 
your stomach will have enough time to shrink down a little bit. You will feel like when you, when you are ready to eat and break the fast, um, you're not going to need to eat as much. So, you know, why don't you just lead up to the vacation with a 72 hour fast? You'll have the momentum. Um, while you're there, you can enjoy some foods. You won't feel um, guilty about it. Um, but at the same time, you probably won't indulge quite as much as if, um, you know, you had just, just gone into the vacation uh, without fasting. And then you'll be ready to, to continue the momentum when you get home and you won't have to worry about, you know, whatever you, whatever you, um, you know, undertook while you were on the vacation. It's a really cool way to think about it too. And when your glycogen depleted, that means like <clears throat> your short-term stores are gone, right? So you're going to be, you know, in a much better state of fat burning going into it, which is going to last for a short period of time. You're not going to have that, you know, compounding effect because you're going to be starting almost from a negative position, right? If you want to think mm -hmm. about it on a, on a yeah. scale of, you know, zero to 10, you're almost, you know, in a negative you're starting in a, in a much more, uh, that's almost a really weird thing to say. You're starting in a much better position. I almost said positive, which would be a complete, you know, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we're not going to go down there. So, um, I like that. And then, you know, the second thing I would say, or the, the final thing I would say on this would be, you know, I never liked, I, I would always know that these dates were coming and I would start working, 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 working. And if I got derailed like two or three weeks out and I knew I wasn't going to hit my goal, I would just stop. Yeah. Yeah. You cool can thing completely right. off the rails, right? Yeah. And I'd be like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to have it. I'm going to go enjoy vacation and I'll be, I'll start when I get back with fasting. It allows you to regain that control in just a few days. So, um, and I, I, I really do feel better when, you know, I stick to, if you're on the vacation, stick to the one meal a day. So if you want to get Enjoy up, Enjoy that meal. Yeah. Go to the beach and you guys are going to go to the, if you're on a, if you're at a resort or on a cruise, right. You know, you get to pick the dinners you get to go to, right. So if you're going to go to the steakhouse that night, know you're going to get the double filet with shrimp and a lobster tail and you're going to have the amazing. salad and the sushi rice and the tuna roll and whatever. Right. And the sake and enjoy it. And maybe the next day have some drinks, you know, lay out by the pool or enjoy the cruise or travel into the mountains or hike or whatever you're going to do. Um, yeah. but then skip lunch and dinner and then go to breakfast and enjoy the breakfast buffet the following day. So just be a little strategic with it. And you're going to realize that spacing those out that 18 to 24 hour window is going to be really impactful. Yeah. You can, you really can partake in all of those fun things, you don't have to cut them all out, but putting some more time in between them is huge. Like I remember a few vacations where I, I kind of accidentally fasted a little longer. This is before I, I had ever actually done any strategic fasting. And then and <clears throat> pounds, you know, and it was just, it was just by accident, basically. And um, it was because I had spanned out. Uh, we had been active, like we had gone on a hike. And then, you know, maybe it was, uh, we had just had lunch the day before. And so no dinner. And then maybe we skipped breakfast. And then, you know, by later on that afternoon, it was like, wow, I feel like I'm down a few pounds. Well, I was, I was accidentally fasting. Yeah. One of the crazy things is like, whenever you're you know, whenever I travel too, it's always like, all right, if you travel with kids, it's like, all right, we get up, we have breakfast. All right, we, we got to get lunch before the kids go down for a nap. Okay, what are we doing for dinner? And it's like food, 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 food. And I'm like, okay, yeah, great. The kids need to eat, but daddy right. doesn't need to eat. Like, I don't right. need, you know, like, just give me some water. I'm going to have a couple, you know, dinner, drinks later. I'm good. Like, but before it was just ingrained that it was like, oh yeah, we got to go. Oh, I'll just have a, I'll just have one plate at the breakfast buffet. Well, no, mm -hmm. just drink some black coffee, you know, take care of the kids, enjoy the moment. Um, and just know that you're setting yourself up for success. So just yeah, a have a strawberry if you want, but you don't need a plate of bacon and you know, eggs Benedict or whatever else they're serving. <laughs> yeah, right? Hollandaise sauce, right? Right. Yeah. Peace out. Um, st short stack of pancakes, maybe a piece of French toast. Yeah. Yeah. And then, a, and then a nap afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Every breakfast meat they have. Not that I've ever done this. So the nah. second situation that we want to talk about is, is similar to, to traveling also, but it's more of the business traveler. So someone that's gone three to four times a week, uh, three or four days a week, excuse me, travels weekly, travels biweekly. Um, you know, someone that has, you know, business lunches, business dinners, um, seminars, uh, meet and greets, you know, you're at the hotel bar, you know, 
during happy hour and then you guys get together for a breakout session, those types of situations. Yeah, important social gatherings. You know, business deals are going to be, uh, you know, made or broken, you know, over some bread. Um, important relationships formed or strengthened like that. So, um, you know, you're not wanting to, to give up these important meals, but at the same time, your week can look very different from the beginning to the end. Um, you know, the first three days you're spending at home uh, with the family or at the office. And then, you know, the next three or four days you're, you're on flights. And like you said, you're having important meetings and, and things like that. Um, there's a few important things um, that you want to keep in mind. So, so, you know, usually it's a little easier to control your situation when you are at home or you're a little more in control of your time and you're not having to um, abide by a certain schedule or meetings or things like that. So, so plan up to it. If it's, if you're traveling later in the week, well then dedicate the first part of the week. Um, You might want to do an OMAD, a one meal a day where, you know, it's, it's dinner with the family. um, But the rest of the time you're fasting kind of leading up to that travel later on in the week, right? Yeah. And, and so similar to the vacation, you know, you can plan a couple days ahead. And then when you're on the business travel, typically the, you know, I, I traveled a ton back in 2014, 15 and 16. And um, I always used to be like, all right, when I get to the airport, I'll go to Starbucks. I'll get a a breakfast sandwich. I'll get snacks for the flight. When I land, I'll find a place to eat lunch. Yeah. And I'm like, Um, okay. So now it's different. It's like, all right, what's my meeting schedule? What's the breakout schedule? Okay, great. There's nothing worse than going to the breakfast and then going to a morning breakout session with a speaker. That's not that entertaining, right? Yeah. Because your blood sugar spikes, it starts to crash and your eyes just start to droop. And then you get to lunch and you're like, oh man, I'm hungry. Right. Cause you've stimulated that process. So then you go to lunch, you have, you know, you have the relationship building, you go to lunch, you come back, you get to the afternoon session and the AC doesn't kick on in the room and it's hot <laughs> and you're just tired. You already feel like, like a nap. Oh God, now I'm hungry. I need a nap. So you break out a protein bar. I've never done this. And then, you know, then it's like, all right, the dinner is actually, okay, we're going to meet in the hotel lobby and then we're going to go out to the dinner. And mm-hmm. then you wake up the next morning and you just feel like, like you've been pumped full of, you know, just water. You're just like yeah. loaded, you're full, and everybody's at the breakfast buffet again, or everybody's at the continental breakfast, or every, they're catering breakfast in, and it's like, ah, here we go again. So you know your schedule, pick out one event per day that's the most important for you, and stick to it. And if people ask, be like, oh no, I already, I already, I had a protein bar, I already ate before I came down, right? If you don't want to have the yeah. conversation, you know, that's fine. First rule of fasting is don't talk about fasting, especially with people that don't know what you're doing or why you're doing it. So, um, yeah, just tell them, Hey, listen, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to eat lunch. I'm good on breakfast. I typically don't eat breakfast, right. Or whatever it is, just pick those events, stick to the plan. And then when you get back, you get a little bit more freedom. Yeah. You know, and if you, if you really feel like, um, you know what, I think it would be better socially relationship wise, if I was eating, you know, participating somehow in this meal, make it minimal. Um, you know, get a green salad, get a small portion or just kind of pick at it. It it doesn't have to be a perfect fast to be an effective one. Um, if you're, if you're 90 or 95% fasted, well, you've gotten most of the benefits. Um, and you could still uh, be there, look like you're eating and, and enjoying everything with everybody else and not kind of look like the odd man or woman out. Right. 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 Cool, uh, cool testimonial. Um, not sure if it's an official testimonial, but it was in a conversation that I have with a good friend of mine that that lives in Florida, uh, and he travels a lot for business. Um, and you know, he's down to the lowest he's been in forever, right? Like just yeah. just doing one meal a day, doing some longer fasts. Um, and he's like, I can't believe how easy this is, and that I'm going to take this on the road with me. Like right. this is going to simplify everything. So we'll everything. get an official testimonial. Um, when I see them, but in the meantime, just a little bit more perspective. So anything else to add on the business travel, Tommy? No, I think, I think that's a, a really well-rounded plan. I think it gives them, uh, gives everybody some tools, uh, that they can use practical cool. steps. Cool. Uh, let's go to the working from home professional mom slash dad slash you're at home, right? You work from home, you stay at home, you're at home. Have you noticed the trend here? Home. Home yeah, is very the problem. Comfortable. It's yes. comfortable, right? It's comfortable. It's kind of easy. It's a little lack. Sometimes it's quiet during the day, but it's, it can also be boring 
or it can be accessible, right? We have lots of things. We have pantries in our modern Western culture, um, plenty of things in the pantry, right? Or in the fridge. Especially if you shop at one of those bulk stores that we will not name, um, where you can get, you know, cases of things for the cost that you can get at, at a normal store, but you have the to buy kids. for yeah, the kids, for right? The, yeah. For the kids. Yeah. We got to get these, up for the kids. Yeah, we get to get the 60 packs of Annie's bunnies. Um, oh, those because, are delicious. Yeah, they are. But, uh, you know, because it's better than goldfish, but anyway, um, yeah, so it's for the kids, but yeah, especially if you shop at those stores, um, and I swear it's worse with kids. Cause it's like, you always have to worry about like, do we have snacks? Right. And we always try to do the healthy yeah. root fruit and, you know, more live food, right. More stuff that grows in the ground than stuff that comes out of a box. Um, mm-hmm. but there are times that you have to do it. So we, 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 tr- we tend to pick the more healthier options. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the first thing we want to talk about here is, is, I mean, to customize your schedule, like stick to it, put hard, solid yellow line boundaries around your day to day. So if you work from home, you're going to have the ability to get up, walk 15 steps and make a decision that you're probably not going to think of as being a big deal. But then, you know, six months later, you've done that, you know, 300 times, (laughs) right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, so proximity is a big one. So choose your office location uh, wisely, right? Uh, So if you can, if you can get it away from the kitchen, away from the pantry, as far as possible, physically separate yourself. I I like to work upstairs. Um, I don't, there's no food upstairs. I don't see a pantry. Um, but if I don't keep a fridge in your office. Yeah. Right. Right. Or, or a mini pantry. Don't do that. A mini pantry. (laughs) Right. Yeah. That, that sounds like a bad idea. Well, if you keep the jar of mixed nuts next to you on your desk, right? Cause a healthy snack, handful of almonds, handful of cashews, right? But if you keep those yeah. next to you, like it's going to be, willpower is not infinite. You're eventually just going to like not even be thinking and just be like, oh yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. You know, 15 so, hands full, handfuls later, right. You already had more than OMAD. Right. Right. You had a couple of days worth of OMAD just from cashews. I've never so, done that. No, I have. So boundaries, I see what you did there. So boundaries, right? So um, locations key, hard boundaries, solid yellow lines around the time. So um, if you have transitioned to working from home, which I know a lot of people have, um, then make sure you stick to a schedule, right? So get up, do your normal routine, and then, you know, stay busy in between. If you know you have downtime and and the dynamics kind of change, then walk downstairs outside, take the dogs for a walk, you know, put on a podcast, maybe this one, go walk around the neighborhood, right? Um, you know, tell a friend get, while you're out. Tell a friend, yeah. Leave us a five-star review. Um, you know, Download the Fast Start Guide. Right, cut the grass. No, um, you know, whatever it is, but get outside, take a break, move a little bit, but stay away from just walking and pacing through the kitchen. Everybody's home, no matter, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but if you've ever gone to somebody's house for a gathering, where does everybody end up? Oh yeah. Everybody's circled around. Uh, if you have an Island in the kitchen, that's oh. usually the place to be. Yep. Yep. And it's if you have an outdoor out. eating area, cooking area, you're going to end up there too. Mm-hmm. Like you don't end up in the backyard, like sitting in the grass, right. Or upstairs in the, in the guest bedroom or all huddled around the treadmill. No, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> drying your laundry. You end up in the kitchen, right. Huddled around the Island. So, um, the last thing I'll say is, is don't buy your go-tos. So don't put your go-to uh, vices, don't put them on your shopping list. If they're not in the house, you can't have them, right? Like, yeah. luckily my wife and I eat completely different food. Um, she likes like kale chips and I'm like, no, that's, that's for cows or for things that graze on grass, I'm good. Um, if I'm going to eat a chip, I'm going to eat a Boulder Canyon chip. It has three ingredients. It's got, you know, coconut oil, sea salt, and potato. Like I'm good with that. I don't need the kale version of it. Um, but don't buy the things that are your go-to, um, buy them once a week, enjoy them once a week, but don't keep them in the house. If you are actually working or at home all the time, because eventually you're going to give in. Yeah. And, um, to further that point, um, make it, make it a little more interesting to drink things around the house too. Mm. Um, so, you know, pick out a new beverage or two. Um, you know, I like Waterloo, uh, water right now. I like the black cherry. That's my favorite. 
Um, grapefruit um, is, is also a popular option, strawberry. So, you know, um, get a different kind of coffee, mix it up a little bit and, you know, try an iced coffee if you're, if you're sick of just, you know, hot black coffee. Um, but, you know, make it a little more interesting. And, and those are things that are going to keep you calorie free, um, mix things up, give you a, a chance to walk away from your desk for a minute, go into the kitchen, um, but you don't have to walk out with something that you, you just don't want to have, right? Right, <clears throat> right, right. So regardless of the vacation, the business travel, the working for home professional, stay at home professional, whatever it is, um, really the underlying theme here is the customization and the plan. So the master of this comes through having a good plan, which is the method. So as long as you can plan out your week and have a framework, the majority of the time your brain's going to work better knowing what's coming next rather than leaving it to the decision in the moment, right? So if you don't have any food at home and you're hungry, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to stop and get something on the way. So um, yeah. really the customization is the key. And that's what we're most excited about. I should say I am most excited about about this 28-day fasting for life experience is that each person is getting that customization. So we're going to make those uh, resources available to everybody in the future. But for now, we're going to be focused on the group. And um, Tommy, action step, land the plane. Tell me what we need to do next. Action step for everybody is think about, um, you know, if you fall into one of these three categories, which a lot of, uh, a lot of listeners will, um, or maybe you have your own category, um, but there's something you can do to further optimize your environment for your day-to-day. -day. Make it to where um, you can adapt to your, your day-to-day -day situation to maximize um, your own goals so that you can set yourself up for success um, this, this next coming week and into the future. So you can, you can hit that finish line that you're looking for. Awesome. Awesome. So take a minute, reflect, <clears throat> think about it, put together that plan. If you need help, reach out to us. Um, we appreciate each and every one of you. Um, drop us some questions, uh, in the reviews. Uh, we like five star reviews. Those are our favorite. So, um, mm -hmm. refer a friend, leave us a review, drop us a question, we're putting together the next batch of questions to do some Q and A's coming up in the next few episodes. Um, and for now, uh, you've, you've got the, you have exactly what you need to do to get the results. It's right there in front of you. If you've got questions, reach out to us. And once again, as always, Tommy, thank you so much. And we'll talk soon. Thank you, Scott. See ya. So you've heard today's episode and you may be wondering, where do I start? Head on over to thefastingforlife.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive fasting tips and strategies to maximize results and fit fasting into your day-to-day -day life. While you're there, download your free Fast Start Guide to get started today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to leave us a five-star review, and we'll be back next week with another episode of Fasting for Life.